Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Asian Hustle Network podcast. Today, we have a very special guest. Her name is Kelly Yu. Kelly is a Chinese-Canadian actor and musician born in Dalian, China, and raised in Vancouver, later moving to Boston to attend Berklee College of Music. Her film career started in 2012 with the lead role in Under the Rain, followed by her television debut on One and a Half Summer. Since then, she's been in several films and television series, as well as having released several albums and award-winning singles. Her music and acting careers often cross paths as her songs have been featured in several of her films and shows, including singing the theme for the film The X-File 3, Return of the Exes. Moonfall is Kelly Yu's latest project alongside the incredible cast of Halle Berry, Patrick Wilson, and John Bradley, directed by Roland Emmerich. The story of Moonfall is about when this, the moon is knocked from its orbit by an unknown force and put onto a collision course with Earth. Two astronauts and a conspiracy theorist work together to attempt to avert disaster and discover that the moon is not what it seems. It releases in theaters on February 4th, 2022. Kelly, welcome to the show. Oh, hi. Hi, everybody. My name is Kelly Yu. Thanks for having me. Of course, just so excited to have you in this show and, and get to talk to you. I mean, congratulations because you heard your past interview before. This is your first disaster role. This also is your first movie in North America. Congratulations. Yes, yes it's, it is. It is my first movie ever in, in North America, and I'm very excited to be in it. Yeah, so let's hear more about that. What was your experience like filming this movie and having this movie be your first North American debut? My experience was fun being the probably the only Asian in the entire production. I think everybody was so nice to me and they um, it is my very first Hollywood movie, too. So I got to be part of it. I was very proud and I thank Roland to give me and Howard to give me this chance to be part of this. Of course. Let's quickly talk about your role as Michelle. Like, we like your role. It's awesome. And we like the fact that you're one of those characters that, without giving too much away, is alive into the very end. (laughs) That's an awesome experience. So let's talk about your role as Michelle. Like, talk us through, like, what was the casting process like? And, Mm -hmm. I mean, how did you, how were you able to represent yourself well on the on big screen, and not just that, but how were you? How were you also able to represent yourself as an Asian or an Asian woman in Hollywood? That's a lot of questions. Actually, let's answer them one by one. Of course. <laughs> when they were looking for, they actually got to me because they were looking for a Asian young female who can speak both Mandarin and English, and who happens to be in in Canada. I was there for my for my family and because of the COVID, so they couldn't get anybody from America to be in Canada because the movie was shot in Montreal. So I just happened to be there and I got a five minutes interview with Roland on Zoom call. And he talked to me about this film and introduced me to 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 this whole project. And I was really, really interested and he listened to my voice and listened to my opinions and stuff and he thinks i am like the person that that's in his mind for this for this role so i kind of got the role from that part from that point i just enjoy that moment of being there and being part of this project and honestly everybody was so nice to me including roland and howard the producer the uh, all the actors and Helly, she's so nice, so sweet. And, and I met quite a few friends there too, like Charlie, the handsome, attractive young boy that's that's being by my side, by my side this whole time. So I, I consider myself really lucky to meet these people. Amazing. Let's talk about Michelle's role. Um, We know that she was an intern student who lives in Fowler's home, um, living with Fowler and the son, Jimmy. And talk about, you know, what her role was like and um, what you saw as like how you connected with Michelle in general. Did you see a lot of resemblances with her and what was her role in the movie um, and what was your perspective about it? She is a student. I'm no longer a student. 
um, way over that period of time. I think the common thing between us is I, you know, I'm also this brave, you know, as brave as she is um, when it comes to protecting the family, the people that I love the most, I care about the most. If this kind of stuff ever happens to us, ever like the disasters or whatever, ever happens to to in real life, I would do exactly the same. I would run, of course, first of all, and then I would, you know, take along whatever I have that that I treasure the most, and then, you know, try my best to protect the people that I love the most. Yeah, I can definitely see. You know, Brian and I we watched the film. Moonfall, and we can definitely see that Michelle. She was definitely very strong. She cared a lot about, you know, even if it wasn't her immediate family, she cared a lot about, you know, everyone around her, all of her loved ones, and she wanted to keep everyone safe. So it's just amazing seeing her role, you know, unravel and develop and grow. You also mentioned, you know, this this movie. It was a lot of it you had to, you know, imagine, right? Because a lot of it, it's, you know, you're not able to film a lot of these disasters in real life, so. You we really had to use a lot of your imagination for these natural disasters. What was it like trying to shoot this movie just using your imagination for most of the time, and how hard was it to do that? Because I know for a lot of actresses and actors, like there's a lot that you have to think about when you're trying to imagine these things and you know apply them to real life and try to think of it in your head, and and so that this this role or this this cut the scene would look very very real. So what was it like for you to imagine all of this stuff happening around you? Well, I guess it's not really that difficult because, like you imagine, you would think that nothing really happens, and we would really have to use our imaginations. But it's not all true. It's part of true, but it's not all true because we do have this voice that that's cueing us, like this this controlling us, because we have to sync, like we have to look all together. Otherwise, it is you know it doesn't look real. So when this guy says, you know,、uh, the meteor is coming. And there's actually lighting, you know, coming over our head, so we can follow the light. And when when he says like, look at the moon, there's actually a spot, <laughs> a little spot in front of us that we can look at. So we have all the cues, and we know like what when to do what. So it's not really that difficult at that point. Other than that, there's like falling birds. There's at one point that the birds are falling. And the real challenge would be in the car. Actually, we were like five people. What one, two, three, four, five, six people scrambling beside like a little van, little not even van, but a little a little five people car, four people car. So it was really crowded, and we had to act. There, the car was wasn't really driving, running at all. We're just there, and there's like people shaking it. So we just pretend that we're all seeing like really crazy gaps and stuff that we have to jump. So that's kind of difficult, a little bit. So Kelly, we know that this is、yeah. your first、um, film in North America, which is such an amazing accomplishment. What do you see as the biggest difference shooting in North America? And you, I know you were shooting in China before previously,、yeah. so. I'm sure that there was a lot of things that you had learned along the way, being、mm-hmm. your first、um, film in North America. So, what were some of those things that you had learned, and what were some of the biggest differences? You know, surprisingly, it's not that different. You know, I, in my head, I would imagine it. You know, fifty different ways of shooting a movie in North America would be so different than than back home, right? So, but no, no, not not that. It's almost like ninety nine percent the same. Besides, you know, in a different language, other than that, all same. Oh wow, that's really glad to hear. I'm really glad to hear that. And you had the amazing honor to, you know, work with such amazing stars like Halle Berry, Patrick Wilson, John Bradley. What was that experience like? And you know, what kind of relationship were you able to grow with these amazing actors? Again, surprisingly, like I would never imagine Halle Berry and and John Bradley and Patrick Wilson will be. Would be you know would be so nice because they're they're huge stars and successful really successful actors. When I first met them, 
I was so scared. I wouldn't like, I wouldn't be able to talk to them. Like I would just stay in, at my corner, you know, doing my own thing. But then, but then Hattie reached to me and, and, and she just talked about regular life and, and asked me a lot about like, she's so curious about like how my life is. She is dying to know a lot of different like cultural stuff and different in different you know places in in uh, worldwide. And she tells she tells me that she loves to travel and she like her best friend. Her best friend is is also can also speak Mandarin too. So I guess I just never imagined them being this nice. Yeah, I mean that's that's really awesome to hear how these actresses and actors are. Genuine and nice to you on stage, and that just speaks volume to who they are as people. But I want to hear more about your story, right? Because I want people to understand who is who is Kelly. So, what was your journey like, like becoming an actress, right? We know you went to to school in in Boston area, Massachusetts.、Mm-hmm. What was the whole process like, like getting to where you are today and getting your first opportunity here in North America? Like, I just want to hear your backstory and what was your motivation. I started doing this from like four year old playing piano, and then、uh, move on to playing guitar. That's how I started my music career. Like, I started playing in bands in high school. You know, just typically teenager stuff, and then I got into Berkeley College of Music for my m- music career to pursue my music career. But then I got like opportunities to go like around the world, states,、uh, Korea, Taiwan, mainland China, and I've seen, I've met a lot of friends. I've seen different people doing different things. Then I get to to try different in different fields like acting. Because I was doing music,、uh, most people think that I'm a musician, but I love acting as well. So when I got the chance, I just I just go for it, and I realized that I really enjoy acting as well.、So、that's when I decided to do both for my career, and I think I I'm able to do it because. You know, there's common links between the two, like writing music, creating, creating music, and creating a a person、um, in in a in a film or in the movie. So I think, I think it's 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 called art. It's called creating stuff. You need inspiration to do both, and I I think I've got inspiration to do both. Yeah, that's amazing. And for Brian and I, we are very、um, non musically talented people, and we we don't do any acting either. So for us, it's like when we talk to musicians and we, when we talk to artists, it's it's so amazing to hear about their creative process and how they come up with inspiration. You said that you have inspiration to do both. Where do you find your inspiration? Like, is there a a certain person that you go to for inspiration, or something that really motivates you? What is that one thing that really pushes you to? To become the best person that you are, it comes from everyday life. All you have to do is observe, like you observe your friend's life, or a story that you read on on newspaper, on on your computer, or on phones. That 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 stuff that feeds you every day, you you get something out of it. Like you you really you really got involved, and then you realize something that. It hits you like like it moves you. Some story moves you, or some story touches you. Then you get really inspired, and you want to write something down. Yeah, that's that's really amazing too. And how how supportive has your family been for you this entire journey? Like, I guess they're being supported by not being supported. Like they are, they leave me alone. I guess that's the that's the best I can ask for for you know from your parents because sometimes they intervene. You know, for some parents, they they want to protect you, or they don't want you to go. They don't want you to go too far because they don't think it's secure. When I when I got into Berkeley, they asked me one question, one question only, like, what do you want to do after you 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 graduate from that school? Do you want to be a teacher? Do you want to you know go back to school, be a professor? I couldn't answer that question because I don't know, and that. Don't know answer is not an answer that she would, you know, they would expect. So most parents would want you to give them a a certain answer, like、um, 
I want to be something like I want to something that I want to I, I actually want to do or actually can support yourself or, you know, you know, you can live on your own. Whereas, you know, you have to they they don't know what you're going to do in the future and they don't know if you're going to support yourself, be able to support yourself. So I guess I couldn't give them that answer at that moment. You know, I chose to I, I chose to follow my dream. And that dream is probably unrealistic. So I wouldn't recommend anybody to do that. But, you know, it's what I did. Yeah, I mean, you were able to manifest everything that you want to do, right? And look at you look at you today. Like the way that you're, you're in this position, you have a lot to be proud of, right? So I'm kind of curious too, like what was that turning point for you where it's like, wow, like this is not just a dream. I can make a career out of this and this can happen. And what was that turning point? I, I sort of like... Deep down in my heart, I, I sort of knew since, you know, 10, 15 years old when I was playing in a band that I know for sure that this is what I want to do in the future for my life, like for my career. But I just I just couldn't say it because because there's too much like there's so much unknown for uh, for you, for uh, for a kid, for a child to be certain that I want to do this. I have to do this. I can't say that to my parents, but deep down in my heart, I, I just know. So that's where I would go. Like I would just go for it, but I, I just wouldn't say it out loud. Wow. That's amazing. I mean, after all of these you know, films and, you know, everything that you've experienced in your career, what has been the biggest lesson for you so far? What has been the one thing that you've experienced that made you think like, wow, I, you know, this is the one thing that I will take away, like the biggest lesson, the biggest, biggest, most valuable experience you've had so far. And how have you grown as a person throughout your whole career? I think, well, wow, that's a very big question, actually. I think we just have to relax. You, you can't expect too much out of, you know, whatever you do, honestly, like, I don't know whoever is watching this, like, what, what field are you in? Like, what, what are you doing? But whatever you do, it, it doesn't really matter. Like, maybe you're in a film, maybe you can influence somebody, maybe you write music, or maybe you clean floors, or maybe whatever you do, but you, you have to enjoy like what you do. That's the most important part. Otherwise, you you won't put your heart into it. There's no, there's no life in, in the work that you do. I, I believe that you, when you love something, um, the dedication, the, the devotion that you, you, you put into it is, is different. It brings things to life. Absolutely. I completely agree. I think we often tend to, you know, put so much emphasis on working very hard. I think especially in the Asian community, we always tell ourselves that we have to work very hard and we often forget to, you know, enjoy and relax or have playtime. Right. And I love that you emphasize that, you know, it's important to relax. It's important to just take it slow and, you know, cherish the moments that we have because we're never going to get them back. Especially when uh, when the moon is falling, and you never know, you know, when the moon is falling. So, so you better treasure whatever you have now. That's true. That's true. And just a very fun question, a very off-topic question: Have you learned any survival skills by being in this movie? Just so, and just so, like in the future, if the, if the moon does fall, like do you know exactly what to do, Kelly. You have survival skills. Did you pick up? Do I um? Do I know exactly what to do when the moon falls? Yeah, I, I don't. We all we did was running. Like we didn't do anything. All the wires did the rest, right? Um, I guess just hold on to something, something really firm that wouldn't move. I guess that's the only thing you can do when the moon falls. All right, I'll keep that in mind. The moon because falls. the gravity is really strong. It's pulling everything off Earth. So grab to something hang on to something of course all right we'll, keep, we'll put make sure we add that in the show notes too for fun <laughs> um so kelly so what's next for you like what do you where do you see yourself next one or two years now that you you had a break you now you have a moment to break into the north american movie industry what's next for you yeah i i don't know because of this covid thing i i can't even get out i'm doing i'm doing quite a few stuff here in china i'm doing more movies and dramas but i would love to see myself one day in a marvel marvel movie one day maybe in the future to see more asian faces in marvels 
Yeah, that's very important. Definitely, you know, striving to push for more Asian representation in a lot more films, you know, outside of Asia is so important. So I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, Kelly, what can our audiences expect from watching Moonfall? Like if you had to like, just kind of like put it into like a concise one or two sentences, what do you think our watchers can expect from the film? Um, and what do you want them to take away from it? Moonfall is not just about the destruction. It's also about human nature and emotions and explores what drives people in in these moments. And also this film is a true cinematic experience was made for the big screen. So we encourage you to, to see Moonfall in the theater if you can. If you can get out, then get out. Yes, Brian and I, we definitely can attest to that because we sat in like these big comfy chairs and every time there would be yeah. the natural disasters, our chairs would be shaking. <laughs> and we're like, whoa, it feels so real. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, but. But do see it in the theater, in cinema, because, because you know, for disaster movies, it would be a completely different experience. When you see it, when you see it, when you see it at home, you wouldn't feel like the whole experience and the sound, the sound and everything. Absolutely. So Kelly, we have one last question for you. And that is, if you could give one advice to an aspiring actor or actress or musician, someone who's trying to be in the creative field, what would that one advice be? Oh, should I tell them to keep going? Because it's a really dangerous job, man. What if <laughs> what if you don't succeed? It's going to be hard. It's going to be a tough life. You just got to be prepared for the worst because I was prepared for the worst. I, I didn't make it until, until maybe just three, four years ago. And it was a very long and boring and tough journey that you have to go through. But once you get through that point, everything's going to be so sweet. And you just going to, you know, you feel everything's worth it. That everything that you, you, you paid and you, you've been through. And you're going to realize that huh, life is worth living, you know. Yeah, I love that so much. And yeah, thank you so much for that advice. Because oftentimes... We, you know, want to do the things that we try for, but when it gets too hard, a lot of us, you know, we just stop, right? So yeah. I love that you mentioned to just keep going and to just persevere and just continue. Um, so where can our listeners find out more about you, Kelly, and Moonfall? I have the Instagram account and there's YouTube. There's always Facebook that you can find me. You can follow me there. And just just Google Moonfall. I'm sure you'll find something. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we'll leave all that in the show notes. And thank you so much, Kelly, and your team for helping us coordinate and have you in the podcast today. We appreciate that. Thank, yeah, you. thank you, Kelly, Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.